Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's uh, my great honor to welcome all of you uh, on behalf of Mechanical Engineering Sectional Committee to another very special uh, public lecture organized by Mechanical Engineering Sectional Committee. The topic today is uh, soft robotics. Soft robotics, future of robotics technology. And today's present is Dr. Damit Chaturanga. Dr. Chaturanga graduated from University of Morato uh, with undergraduate degree in mechanical engineering and completed his master's and PhD in mechanical engineering specialized in robotics from University of Ritsumeikan, uh, Japan. Dr. Chaturanga is currently working at the University of Morato as a senior lecturer. He has worked in Mitsubishi Electric uh, Co Corporation Japan, Tachiban Electrical Corporation Japan and Aerosense Private Limited and he has published a number of articles in journals and conferences in soft robotics. Dr. Chaturanga's today's presentation will bring together the science, engineering and applications in household and industry, industry of soft robotics as well as how Sri Lankan can take advantage of this trending technology. Please try to make, mac, make uh, take maximum amount of this valuable opportunity. Thank you very much and over to you, dear sir. Thank you, Dr. Damit. Uh, Thank you for the warm welcome. So, uh, Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So, as you know, my topic today is about soft robotics, and I, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what soft robotics is and how this can be, uh, this technology can be used in Sri Lankan context for the future. So, uh, before I go into the depth of this subject, let me introduce you a little bit about the content about of my. Uh, presentation. So, uh, I want to give you a, a brief introduction about what the trend in uh, the world, how the spending behavior in, in, in context of robotics and after that I want to bring you to soft robotics but before that I will give you a little brief introduction about the evolution of this robotics science. And, uh, from there, I will go into the fabrication of such robots and the application of these robots in various industries, fields, and then uh, give you a little bit about the advantages and shortcomings in this technology and how we can take this uh, uh, technology and uh, use it for benefit of Sri Lanka. So uh, without taking a lot of time, let me go into the details. and. Uh, Let's look at how the world spends on this technology, particularly robotics technology. Now, if you look at the graph, you would see that in the year 2000, only 7.4 billion was spent on totally on robotics uh, technology, and it's it's increased gener uh, gradually. And now, in 2015 to 2025 it has increased quite rapidly this has to do, has been done because of the short, uh, short uh, the labor cost going up and there are technologies emerging and the chinese market emerging because now even in sri lanka the the labor cost is quite high so people the industries are willing to spend much more uh, uh, the, on their on uh, automation and uh, robotics related uh, research and uh, if you look at the figures the IFR in 2017 said that by the, by the year 2020 1.7 million new industrial robots will be there and 32 million domestic robots Do domestic robots mean uh, cleaning robots then uh, the vacuum cleaners uh, window cleaners etc those kind of robots will increase and the market is increasing up to 
from uh, 42.9 million billion billion dollars right and uh, if you consider the year 2018 and 2025 within that time there will be a 30 billion dollar market opening up for robotics technology yeah. and that has that you have seen that because of this much of uh, open the money flowing around people if they invest more on these technologies might be able to get a portion of that spending and uh, earn a few bucks so that is the point that I wanted to uh, give you that robotics technology is evolving and it's increasing and uh, we should take the advantage of that being a st we don't want to just limit ourselves of Sri, uh, Sri Lankan economy to just producing uh, 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 agricultural projects but we should focus on, on technological aspects as well so, so you see that there is a trend and there is a possibility to get some money out of this trend so how are we going to do that before we're going to do that, I want to talk to you a little bit about what so robotics is and how it evolved. So, in traditional robotics, people have, you, you might have learned, when you say about robots, what comes to your mind? There is a machine working here and there, there is like an arm-like thing, moving its arms and doing a welding like thing in the in the car manufacturing field or picking up something and putting it into a box like that that's the vision that you get that is true that has been the case for almost 50 years or 60 years the the robotics technology was basically developed for industry and uh, the definition also states that a machine capable of carrying out a complex series of actions automatically especially one programmable by a computer this is a program machine so unless you program for all the steps all the uh, variables in that environment the machine cannot operate if it's programmed very precisely it will operate very well no no errors no problems works fine that's okay so you would have seen images like this like the the red robots in tesla company making uh, cars and this, uh, I'm sorry, the video is a bit slow, but you would see that uh, a robot picking up a metal piece and trying to load it into a CNC uh, uh, milling machine. Uh, and do why after the the machine did it, its uh, work, the the robot will unload the work piece back to a uh, storage area, something like that. Those are routine dull repetitive tasks that's what we have used robots for to doing these kind of machine uh, these kinds of tasks and uh, you would see that there's no human interaction in these videos the robot works in a confined area and uh, it, it has a fence of its own people don't go inside and if the people go there if the robot for some reason moves and hits him he will die in that location because these are very rigid very strong robots and they are they are working in very high velocities so uh, but this is not the case now these robots were very good for repetitive tasks as i told you and for precise motions but uh, when we come to everyday tasks, this is not easy. Now, uh, for example, I was working in Mitsubishi Electric. There, uh, there was a problem now. They were building P uh, MCBs and there were small pieces in the MCBs that they needed to uh, as uh, assemble. But the thing is, you cannot use a robot to assemble those pieces because you have some objects like this and they have to go inside the uh, another piece and if there is kind of like a, a, a obstacle or something like that a person would like shake it and then insert it 
this thing cannot be done by a robot at least now the, the difficulty in if aligning misaligned parts if it's perfectly aligned the robot will go and fix it no problem the same thing happens in Canon also there are Canon photocopiers you see that a lot of uh, ribbon cables are there you need, uh, in the photocopy machines but to fix those ribbon cables a person uh, you need a person only a person can go and fix the ribbon cable because the ribbons itself has a bit of a softer side and it can when you move it downwards because of the wind it will bend a little bit and uh, for a precise precision robot you cannot uh, the robot cannot identify how much amount of bending was there to fit it precisely to the socket so these kind of things still we are using humans and the thing is human labor is costly so people are trying to find out uh, uh, solutions to automate this so that has become problem in industry and looking at other type of work now in households also it is having a bit of a problem now people there are elderly people in the world living alone in households though uh, other they, their children cannot uh, look after them so they need to hire a service a service provider or a maid to look after them but the, some people even then it is difficult for them to uh, uh, look after because of certain aspects so there are robots that have uh, come up to help such these such of these uh, instances and like that there are the robot systems are evolving now initially there was only industrial robots doing material handling welding inspection now then after some time there came field robots doing uh, automated vehicles for uh, moving the, the products in the shop floor and uh, UAVs, drones, underwater robots etc for uh, exploration tasks like that there were things and also agricultural robots for, uh, for harvesting or to uh, sow uh, agriculture fields and then came the collaborative robots as I said for people to work around the robots I mean the people work around robots and robots should interact with the first people unlike the industrial case industrial case the robot was in a fence and people did not go inside but now it's not the case you need to work alongside the, uh, the robot and uh, there are then the safety aspects and uh, the uncertainties comes into play and another type of robot is the medical robots very high demand now now this uh, this uh, picture shows a da vinci robot the robot itself is very expensive but these are used for minimal invasive surgical surgical applications the doctor is a bit far away and the the point uh, the, the the probes are the only things that are going to your body and it's just uh, doing the operation or the surgery by these robots and uh, the recovery time has been drastically reduced helping the, uh, because of these uh, robots now these kinds of things are emerging and are continually improving and what happens is that still there is a problem the problem of safety the first thing people have to work closer closely with the robots now that has become another uh, thing that the people want to improve on so the as in the the, the slide shows the not the industrial but the other robots will work with people and we will work with uncertain environments. What I mean by uncertain environments is that if the environment now in the industry, I, so I told you the robot is in a picket uh, inside a fence. Nothing will happen. No, no, no 
gush of wind come and uh, change the orientation or anything like that it will be working exactly the same uh, location and doing the same work in the same style but in the case of field robots collaborative robots or medical robots there is a little bit of uncertainty in the environment in the case of let's say uh, a drone now the drone is hovering somewhere okay and if a sudden gush of wind comes the drone will move a little bit opposite uh, towards uh, with, the, with the wind and you need to come back and correct itself and stay in the posi uh, position that it was asked to stay like that in the case of medical robots you know that the doctor at the moment he is making decisions same with the robot sometimes you need to have uh, decision making abilities inputted into the robot itself so that uh, the, these uncertainties can be uh, correctly handled so uh, yeah, same with collaborative robots now in the case of this uh, Honda SESMO if you look at it it's trying to give uh, give some uh, some caffeine or some uh, cup of tea or something like that to the patient or the human and for some reason if the human changes its arms or the orientation of its arms he has to accommodate that change so these are dynamic environments which the robot needs to uh, uh, change and uh, act accordingly so going with the evolution that uncertainties is a problem how to manage those and the other thing is human interaction with the humans how we can interact with the robot so that the robot does not have a uh, does not impact the safety of the user uh, if you look at these uh, pictures you would see certain sets, sets of robots are being used this PRC Herbo uh, was a humanoid robot used for uh, environmental uh, sorry uh, what you call uh, uh, aspects of uh, emergency uh, uh, services it can uh, it, it was used as a, com a competitor in the DARPA robotics challenge to find out which robot can maneuver rough terrains operate a car drive a car open a door like that there are some certain tasks and this DRC Hubo was the first place winner and there was another robot in uh, the Carnegie Mellon Biorobots uh, group that looks like a snake that can climb a tree and of course you might have heard about robot Boston Dynamics lot of robots two-legged ones four-legged ones made for certain uh, applications and the NASA also has uh, initially they had the mass rovers but now they are thinking about robot simians like four-legged robots now when you look at these robots what can you think now these kind of robots are imitating the nature humans snakes or quadrupeds these are always mimicking the biology so you would see that the initially there were industrial robots then came a little bit of field robots and all those things and these robots are mimicking the biology why is that it has become evident that uh, the human or the biology the animal biology has good advantages that we could use instead of like in the case of mass rover now if you want to move in rough terrains maybe the roll uh, the uh, the wheels are not the way but legs might be much uh, more useful so like that biology has been, uh, inspired a lot of researchers and that has led to another type of research the the research into soft materials and soft robots why we are saying that is now if you look at a human body how is it consist of it has a, a bone a set of bones skeleton and it's covered with some muscles tissues 
and it's it's uh, these tissues are covered with a uh, uh, skin layer. Now, if you look at that, what is the hardest part? Only the bones. The rest of it is tissue. But what what can we do? We can lift weights up to like up to 50 kilograms. It's not an issue. We can lift it, and uh, the joints we can uh, in, uh, apply a lot of forces. How is this possible with just soft elements? Now the bones even are not uh, connected very well. No, bones are connected just with the cartilages, but it's are there. It's there, but it can move, but it will withstand the forces. Similarly, if you look at the octopus, no bones at all, but it can go inside very small holes also because there are no bones. It can squeeze through those bones, uh, through those holes, but also it can grasp objects very finely. That means it can, it can uh, vary its stiffness of the muscles depending on some uh, instances. It can feed, it can catch a fish and uh, it can move some objects. You, uh, just only a soft, very soft tissue is not, the, uh, is not possible but there are different mechanisms which we can use for certain applications. I will go into that later. Similarly, the stingrays here, they have a different uh, uh, stroke unlike the fish, like a wavy motion that can propel through water very well. And uh, with this, tech, uh, this, uh, this new biomimicry, we could also make certain robots like that. And that has become the new trend, taking uh, uh, the nat nature and mimicking it and using that. And you would see that th this has uh, more advantages than using traditional uh, robotic technologies. Now uh, all of these uh, concepts are soft, tissue soft. Uh, the stingray soft material, soft, soft elements and the octopus soft elements. So this has you know, given the researchers okay found fine soft is a new trend and we should incorporate that in the robotics field as well. So the robotic soft robotics came into play around in 2000s around 2000 uh, the, the term coined out. So people tend to focus on this and they have uh, come up with certain technologies, some certain robots, etc., using these technologies. So um, soft robots is a, uh, a evolutionary step in robots. So going on to soft robotics now. What are soft robots? Actually, soft robots is anything that is made out of soft materials. Now, the soft robots can be in a vast range. The spectrum is quite large. You could have many stiff elements, but few soft elements as well. And that can also be uh, categorized as a soft robot, like in the case of HR hexagonal robots. Those are just a uh, robots that can uh, 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 move in terrains, rough terrains. And there is an exosuit in the, in the first picture that is mostly uh, used, in, uh, used by, uh, made by rigid components. Uh, you would see some uh, metal parts in the, the knees and, uh, and the back, but there are cables the power is transmitted through the cables and that is that ha and that is kind of like a wearable uh, machine and that has made it a soft robot and there are other type of robots with varying degrees and you can have completely soft robots that uh, that are made out of maybe polyurethane uh, soft materials like uh, silicon rubber etc so or combination of soft materials, hard materials like aluminium, metals, 
uh, polymers, composites, etc. So, <coughs> depending on your uh, uh, requirement, you could uh, say this is soft, this is not. But uh, right now, people have not come up with a good uh, uh, measurement to say, okay, this is exactly soft robots, but these are not. So the line is still blurred. We don't know which is which we can use it as soft, yeah, which we cannot. So, how we can make these soft robots? Now, you, I told you that we are using soft materials now, so still we can uh, di have different ways of making the robots. And when we want to know about how we can make them, we need to know the components of the robot. Any type of robot is made out of actuators, sensors, structure and the algorithm. We can uh, divide it into basically four main parts. So the actuators, now the soft robots will have actuators made out of soft materials. We can make soft material actuators, something like this. This can bend. Now I will show you the exact one, but this is a finite element model of this, uh, of this actuator. It is bending. When you apply a pressure, a pneumatic supply, it will bend because of its structure, different structure. There, there are small pieces that are expanding because of the pneumatic air pressure and, and after that they will contact, uh, contact with each other and because of that there will be some bending. That is one type of uh, actuator. Another one could be a linear actuator where it is the transition, uh, the movement is in linear. Now in this case this is a material polymer that uh, when you apply some electricity it, uh, it contracts and we could use that to, uh, to make a linear actuator kind of like a cylinder, piston cylinder but in this case it is made out of soft materials. And then the other one is the sensors. Now the sensors also we can make soft sensors. Now in this case this is a soft sensor, just a fabric like sen sensor. You stretch it and it changes its resistance and we can measure out, measure the distance and the, the force it's applied. Depending on how you are using it, you could uh, either make uh, measure distance or the forces. And uh, the other one is the structure. Now the structure again polymers. You can use plastics, polymers, for, uh, rubber materials and then uh, what else? Uh, composites to make the structures which can change its shape. Uh, now in this case you would see the, the structure deforms when there is a, uh, a load applied on them but it will not break. Now this is another aspect of uh, soft robots and the algorithms and here the algorithm is uh, somewhat di uh, different from uh, very hard robots. I will go into that later in the later slides but you would see that uh, the algorithms we are using for soft robots is uh, it has its own uh, components if you look at it now. Uh, the, the soft robot is made out of soft materials and the material properties help the, uh, the robot to achieve certain, uh, certain functions. You don't have to program them. Now if you want to walk, sometimes in the case of a hard robot, you have to uh, program exactly when to uh, lift your leg, keep it on the ground, what is the next uh, swing like that each step one by one you have to program but in the case of soft robotics there are some aspects that you don't need to program it will automatically uh, manage itself and uh, because of the, the the material properties so these kind of things are important when you are designing so the the, fun, uh, the soft sensors everything should be fabricated now the, the main fabrication methods available are you could have uh, materials used by silicon elastomers polyurethane 
nylon, captain, plastics, etc. These are very cheap, freely available materials, and the methods you can use can be there are high uh, uh, high tech methods like 3D printing. Now, in this case, it's printing a, a structure out of uh, poly polymer. And uh, this is another one method. Now, in this case, the 3D printers there are now available. There are available 3D printers that can print soft materials, and the stiffnesses can be varied depending on your requirement. You could have very hard material and a very soft material printed all together at once. That is also possible. So, combined. Uh, structures can be made out of these technologies this is one way the other one is the basic casting methods you have a mold you pour the the soft material either rubber silicon rubber or anything like that and you keep it until it's cured and take out the the parts those is this is another way of doing it injection molding everyone knows what injection molding is you uh, push the material into a mold and then uh, keep it for some time until it cures and then take it out. Pla plastics you can use injection mold and the coagulant dipping method. Now this is how we use to, uh, to make rubber gloves. You can dip the, the mold into the, uh, the, the material, the rubber material or latex material and take it out and after some uh, uh, layers you put have the necessary thickness required and something like that also can be used to make structures for robots okay so this is the fabrication of robots and again the layer composites where the, the you can use layered layer by layer materials to make the required shape you want and the actuation methods that you require if it's a, a balloon type one two pieces can be two pieces of soft materials can be glued together to have a cavity and that cavity can be act, uh, can act as a balloon or uh, any type of uh, you can uh, you can engineer st uh, structures you want okay now the interesting part now you know what soft robotics are how you can make the soft robots the methods and what we can see the applications now these are in industry right now some of them are in this research level but some are uh, working and uh, they are being uh, developed and uh, marketed one thing is the human uh, the the bionic motion uh, uh, the motion robot that uh, mimics the trunk of the elephant now, this was made by Festo. As I told you, that uh, mimicking sometimes the human nature is advantageous. Now, for some reason, now if you have different objects to grasp, uh, a, a typical industrial robot is not the uh, not easy. I mean, if the object size varies, let's say a pineapple, the pineapple size varies uh, depending on the the tree I mean no pi two pineapples are the same size so if the if you want to pick and put the pineapple into a, a, a package or uh, you want to keep it in a pack or something like that a typical industrial robot may not be the case because you cannot say okay you you only need to move the jaws of the gripper 10 centimeters or 12 centimeters you can't give a value because the diameter of the pineapple will vary so how are you going to do that you could use a, 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 a arm like the one that will be shown in the video sorry it's a bit slow that uh, uses the elephant trunk and the concept of the, uh, the, the octopus's tentacle <coughs> Okay. 
Now this is uh, this is also a manipulator, but using uh, a, a concept of a trunk. Sorry, the video is a bit uh, slow, lagging. Let me. The main manipulator has 12 degrees of freedom and there will, there's a small uh, arm like thing like the octopus that wraps around the object and then picks it up. Yeah, this one. The blue one is the octopus's tentacle like thing that wraps around and takes that object, grasps that, grasp that object. So, uh, and these are not typical uh, manipulators, the ones that you find with the motors and all those things, you know, but made out of uh, polymers and uh, fabrics and all those things and made with just pneumatic air supply that is one thing and the other one you would have seen this in the video also grasping fruit now uh, in the agriculture field uh, you need to grasp the fruit so that it will not get damaged a traditional robot with a rigid gripper may be a problem it will grip it grip the if you apply a very large grip force the tomato will be squashed. So, in order to uh, stop that, what we can use is a soft element like that, a robot gripper. I'm sorry, it's not working. Okay. Yeah, it's gra grasping the tomato, and uh, because we are using fingers made out of soft materials it will only gra uh, apply enough force just for the grasping part if it if it applies more than the force necessary it will just deform a little bit the object will not deform but the finger will deform but it can plug the tomato so that is one thing and the other one is you could have straight away manipulators made out of just uh, soft materials like fabrics now this one is made out of fabrics and still it can you know lift a uh, hammer and give it to the person and uh, the good thing is unlike the traditional industrial robots if this gets uh, if this hits you you will not die but will only like bruise yourself so the safety is quite good compared to traditional robots And another ap application is uh, motion augmentation. That means now this is more to do with uh, exosuits, wearable robotics, uh, where we need to give at least, you, let's say you want to uh, carry a large load and your body is not enough, so you need to, you can wear some uh, exosuit or something like that and uh, carry that object without any problem because the exosuit will uh, distribute the remaining load to the ground your bo your joints and bones will not work now in the case of elderly people you know that uh, after some certain age it will it's difficult for you to some for difficult for some people to walk because they they are they are their bodies get weaker and that uh, that we uh, that way we could use exosuits that wearable wearable underneath the the garments like in the sh figure, figure shown uh, that are made out of again fabrics and uh, soft materials and use soft uh, actuators to uh, help the person to move walk 
uh, without any problem. So if you look at this uh, video also, this is another uh, kind of an uh, exosuit where the person the person is walking and there is a cable connected to the uh, the, the heel of the foot and it's pulling itself. So every time the person walks and uh, tries to uh, the in the gait, it's when it's walking, he's walking, it supports a little bit by pulling it upwards. So that has helped the person to carry a much larger load for a longer distance because part of the 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 force can be given by another instrument. Similarly, we could use this concept to help elderly population also. And another application of motion augmentation is in this video also there are, there is a person who has lost his ability who lost his ability to grasp objects. So what they have done is they have made a glove using a soft actuator, a bending actuator like in the figure that helps the person when he when he when she wants to grasp something she uh, there is an EEG signal picked up by that uh, object uh, picked up by a sensor and it tells that this person wants to close its his grip her grip so what happens is that the the, the glove itself actuates and uh, helps the person to close the grip because she has his her fingers the fingers are there but she has lost the ability to move those fingers that can be done with this kind of uh, augmented device so one of the most important things in uh, soft robotics is its application into biomedical devices one is the prosthetic hand now mind you these kind of robots are not that very expensive now if you look if you go for a uh, a very high uh, like uh, a solid hand that might cost around 200,000 rupees if it's working if it's at least trying to grip something but uh, a soft robot could be made out of, out of soft materials like rubber or polyurethane for much cheaper prices And the another thing is a new technology has come up uh, to help heart patients. Now, the, sometimes the heart heart is not uh, pumping enough uh, blood to circulate in in the body. This has become uh, in uh, in Harvard University. They have made. Uh, a sleeve like thing to the heart, for the heart that helps it to be beat, beat faster the videos are let's see this one we will stop okay okay yeah now the the the, the sleeve itself helps the heart to be, uh, beat fast uh, beat and have a regular beat And these are also made out of softer materials, soft, uh, soft robotic applications. And another one, very important one, is the stretchable electronics. Now, uh, people have come up with that. Now, people, most of the people want to have more healthier lives. And uh, the, the one of the most trending and lucrative uh, industries is health monitoring and uh, wearable health monitoring devices have become a trend and people often wear a wrist watch or, or a, a necklace or anything like that to track their movements and to count their steps like that and like uh, similarly it has allowed people to make wearable uh, sensors, wearable devices to measure the heart rate, to measure the the, the, the stresses, etc. And to make those components, we need to have 
not solid uh, electronics but stretchable electronics now you need to put, wash them regularly you know if it's a clock and uh, for that we have uh, people have developed stretchable electronics st still made out of silicon or uh, soft materials and uh, these kind of wearable devices for inputting data like a mouse and uh, in this case this uh, the stretchable sensor that I showed you earlier that kind of sensor is used in this glove to track the motion of the fingertips fingers and uh, that is being uh, transmitted to the computer the, the, the mobile device so these can be used for to replace the normal traditional mouse or in the augmented reality now if there are uh, virtual reality goggles and if you want to open a, a doorknob you can use these gloves to get the signal that okay you want to open a doorknob that can be put into the virtual reality platform and that will give a sensation of uh, uh, a visual feedback of opening a door like that these are they are in the market and another thing is wearable tech for sports uh, sports monitoring now in this case this person is wearing a, a, a short or a, a trouser that has wearable uh, so, uh, sensors on on it which can detect the movement of the joints now these can be used for sports as well now in the case of Muthaya's case he was chucking and he, uh, people were uh, people wanted to see if it, he was chuck, uh, chuck, uh, chucking so what they did is a lot of cameras were there to see his bowling patterns whether he is chucking or not but nowadays you don't need to have those kind of rooms and lot of cameras you can just wear a suit like this to see how much your, your, your joints bend and what are the best post, uh, postures to uh, to do uh, to do in a sports now in the case of running the posture is very important to have a very good uh, start and start the, the the sprint so a person a trainer can look at the computer or the tab and see okay this guy's posture is not correct we need to improve the posture in the case of dancing also the same thing we could improve the steps or the, the motions using these kinds of uh, sensor uh, wearable garments and these are trending now quite and the, one of the very lucrative markets is the in, uh, entertainment market and uh, for some reason people are very much uh, into this and uh, now this is kind of like a stretchable skin now this skin now we have skin now could be used for humanoid robots almost human like robots for entertainment purposes and uh, for even for receptionists in the companies people are st starting to use these human like robots and they have same capability sensing capabilities as us because of these uh, artificial skin so again a very lucrative field and uh, heavily use soft robotic uh, sensors and actuators for these applications and uh, one of the let's go into the advantages of this type of robots now soft robots inherently are soft so interaction with people is not that difficult and there's no there's very little safety aspects you have to consider when you're interacting with soft robots because made out of uh, uh, polyurethane and uh, uh, what you call uh, pneumatic air some just uh, now in this case this was made for Disney by Carnegie Mellon University now this uh, robot represents the uh, I don't know if you watched the movie uh, Big Hero that has a soft robot that uh, it, uh, checks the health of the, the, the owner 
Now, this, to give a bit of an understanding of how this can be done, they have uh, the Disney have asked the Carnegie Mellon University to make this robot. Now, this one is made out of just a uh, inflame, uh, inflammable uh, structure, and it still can, you know, uh, wipe a per person's face. So these are still possible technologies, even though still young at its uh, uh, development. And one of the other thing is very low cost. Now, if you look at this video, I don't know. It is made out of polyurethane bags. The robot is made out of polyurethane bags. But mind you, this robot can uh, grasp a 500 milliliter bottle and place it where you want it. Now, how much is an industrial robot in the market now? Around two thousand twenty thousand dollars, twenty thousand odd dollars. If it's a very, uh, if it has very large uh, 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 payload capacity, it's very expensive. But this kind of robot, how much would that be to make this? Not more than thousand dollars, I would say, because very cheap uh, components and uh, the construction is easy, and still it can do the work. We only need to uh, program it such that the parts, the, the the robot operates in the way that we want. It may not be accurate as an industrial robot, but we don't need accuracy all the time. So, a robot like that, a cheaper solution for even industries. And uh, because it's cheap, you can replace after some wear, wear and tear. The robot will have some uh, wear and tear compared to the industrial robot, but replacing that is much cheaper. Mimic the nature itself. So sometimes the, the, the robot, industrial robots or the hard robots will walk in odd ways, not uh, mimic the nature and it will be sometimes problem. Now, if the, in the case of a, a lower limb robot, it, uh, it normally does not have the same degrees of freedom as us. So, we, it cannot uh, uh, walk in uneven planes. If it is a flat surface, it will easily walk. But, uh, but for us humans, uneven planes is not an issue and uneven terrains, lot of rocks, puddles, we do not care, we can walk anywhere. But for very hard robots, the ones that I to, uh, showed you in uh, in the very beginning, the humanoid robot that won the DAPA challenge might be difficult to walk in those terrains. But uh, if you have soft robots, there is a possibility that you can walk in these terrains because of, as I told you, the, uh, the, the computational method that we are using is different from traditional robots. And it is energy efficient because these robots itself are not that heavy. So, in the case of uh, industrial robots, I am taking that as a, uh, a baseline. So, industrial robots are very heavy, their links are all metal and made out of uh, gears and all those things and you need to have large power sources and uh, motors to move those machines. But in the case of these soft robots, they are made out of soft hollow materials and uh, the weight is quite low and uh, just pneumatic care is enough for some of those movements and uh, that has become more uh, energy efficient in the case of the system. And uh, we can use smart materials to regenerate the lost energy also. Now, in the case of uh, traditional robots, you cannot take back the energy that we have lost. But in the case of soft robots, if you apply a force, it will keep the force, uh, it, it will absorb the force and uh, keep uh, keep the energy of that force. And you can take the energy out if, uh, from, uh, from some other means. Uh, means. And in the case of walking, now in our bodies also, we have the spring-like elements in our in our legs. 
it stores a little bit of energy when we going when we are doing the walking movement and when we are just pushing our legs to uh, uh, to start the walking there will be some energy uh, dissipated after the, the the from the energy that we have stored and uh, of course soft materials can be made out of biocompatible materials that means you could put those in our bodies and it will dissolve sometime later and it will be a, not a problem unlike the hard so hard robots that uh, uh, that initially were used uh, soft robots deform under pressure so highly useful when uh, we are applying very uh, large loads for some reason if we apply a very un uh, uh, uncertain if in an uncertain environment for some reason someone applies a unknown force to the robot if it's a industrial robot it will break the, the gears will break the gear teeth will break and you need to fix that but in the case of, of soft robots it will might uh, deform but it come it will come back to the original shape that is possible so these are some of the uh, advantages and one of the other advantages I told you about the computation now I told you that in the case of soft robots some of the soft robots when they want to walk you don't have to program everything now in this case the the picture shows that only the, when you want to move this four-legged robot you only have to activate two, two legs at a time and then uh, there is like a worm uh, wor uh, worm like motion and this motion you don't have to worry about the terrain unlike a, a hard robot because whatever the case whatever the terrain this will align itself or change its shape to match the terrain and just move so you only have to uh, excite these legs only you don't have to worry about the, the terrain so this is an advantage for the robot but when there is advantages there will be bound to have disadvantages also so there are some challenges in developing these robots one is the gravitational loading now having a soft element itself may be advantage and a disadvantage now uh, if for some reason if you have a soft link like let's say uh -uh, because of the gravity this will bend a little bit unlike a rigid robot rigid robots uh, have very little bending it's minimum you can ignore it but in the case of soft robots the bending is quite significant and you need to uh, include that in your control algorithms and control methods also and finding appropriate power sources and actuators sometimes you cannot uh, find a good suitable actuators for the application you require sometimes the, the the actuators that you have the soft robot actuators might be large so that you cannot put it in in the uh, the application that you want and the force that it produces is not enough so that is the the power or the force is not enough so that might be a problem so you may have to come to a, a, a a compromise whether you want to have a soft robot it can have a certain amount of power or a hard robot with all the power you want that is also a thing and the other thing is developing a soft uh, the control algorithms now in the case of hard robots now in the in the picture you would see if you want to move a manipulator you only need to put give the theta values and it will move on move to the xyz coordinates required but in the case of soft robots that's not the case the movement is a bit difficult because they are not linear they are non-linear systems that means the, the deformations are non-linear so uh, there are there are the gravitational loading is also there non-linear effects are there and all of these need to be calculated so the complexity is a bit high compared to uh, rigid robots but the trade-off 
I think is uh, acceptable. I mean, you need to uh, uh, you need to come up with a trade-off so that uh, both simplicity, cost effectiveness, and the the, com uh, the computational requirement is matched. And the other thing is now most of you would have thought that okay, having a balloon like actuator would be kind of uh, difficult uh, if, the, if we are uh, you were, uh, working in an environment that someone comes and punches it, what will happen? Yeah, that is a problem. But luckily, there is a, a research company, a research university has found out a material that even though you punch it, it'll, it will heal itself. So those problems are coming now. Now these problems are being uh, solved uh, quite easily. Now this video shows the uh, a person comes and cuts the finger, and uh, and after that, the if you heat the material up, it will. Uh, uh, it, it will try to heal itself by bonding it together. So I'm sorry about the video. And, uh, so those are the things that are available and uh, the things that you should know a little bit about uh, software box. Now what we want to know is what's the future of this? Now. Uh, before going to future, I want to give you a little bit of a case study. The, the videos that I'm showing you is some of the work that I have done uh, in my PhD and also uh, at my university right now. So these are kind of things that we can do. And uh, this is also something like that. Now, in the case of Japan, in a, I, when I was working in Japan, there was a problem that people were eating this kind of lunch boxes and these lunch boxes are sold in millions in Japan but the thing is these are still made out of made by humans now in the case of our case we have lunch packets ne? in Japan they, are, they have these lunch boxes with variety of lunch item, uh, food items and you need to pick them and put, the, put them in the boxes and wrap them still these are done by human labor and they wanted to automate it and the problem is you can see that the objects the, the the beans in the cup when you lift it the cup deforms so normal rigid robots are not easy for this kind of application so what they asked was to develop a robot gripper so that we can use to hold these objects so we have done that as a research and uh, Give, uh, made this kind of robot grippers for grasping the food items without damaging it. Similarly, there was another research that wanted us to make a, a fabric that you can measure the stresses or the forces applied onto it. So there we had this uh, uh, this fabric here made out of uh, conductive materials when you stretch it the resistivity changes so that could be uh, made woven into a fabric that can be used as a force sensor now in the videos you would see that the, the when you push the fabric downwards there is a uh, change in the voltage so that can be uh, used for force measurements and that was used uh, in soles in the in the socks as uh, when a person when elderly people walk there is a pro probability to fall down they needed to understand whether he fell or not so what they wanted was to make a sock out of those uh, sense uh, sensors or the fabrics and when you walk there will be a uh, a pattern and if there is a slip for some reason there will be a different pattern and identifying this different pattern would lead to identifying whether the person slipped and fell or not 
so this is another uh, aspect of this uh, variable sensor type of thing and uh, this was another This is another sensor that uh, I've made, again a soft sensor and you could see that it's like a pen, you push it, uh, it can deform and what, this is, what you use this is, it's for measuring force in three dimension, directions, x, y, z force measurement. You can use this in minimal invasive surgery where now in the case of doctors, if the per, if in cancer uh, situations, a doctor can touch the body, human body and understand if there are uh, stiffer locations and he could, you know, when you go to a doctor, physician, you, the doctor normally touches you, you know, and checks whether there are stiff, uh, stiff tissue in your body. We wanted to find out a method to uh, use this te technique. So we need a sensor that can be used for this palpation moment, uh, palpation situations. So we develop this sensor, and this sensor is uh, made out of silicon, and you just touch it, and you give the force readings. And uh, after this, uh, you do some palpations and uh, check the force readings, and you can come up with and say, okay, the the t uh, the area that you have touched has a stiffer uh, stiffness uh, compared to the rest of the body or is it uh, not stiff or stiffer and you can you know come up with the decision this is another way of uh, another application of soft sensors so these were the the applications that were done and that could have been uh, uh, that uh, had some uh, applications and now in my laboratory in University of Morotua we are doing some research in uh, grasping also and this uh, in this case we are also using soft materials for developing a soft gripper the the, uh, the difference is normally the all the grippers I showed you in the earlier uh, the, 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 the black one was made out of 3D printing and 3D printing is very costly but we came up with another method the coagulant dipping method like the, uh, the gloves uh, rubber gloves manufacturing method to develop a soft gripper and uh, it is something like this one finger is something like this and it can move in two dimensions, two degrees of freedom there and it can grasp objects. And this is done by, uh, made out of rubber uh, or latex materials and that's the novelty in this gripper. And uh, we've tested for different food items. no problem we can lift it without break, uh, dropping and uh, we have put some sensors inside the gripper also so, so know that how much we, it has bent the angle of the bending bending angle we can measure also this is quite new so we could uh, use this in industrial gripper applications and another research that we have done is to embed a soft tactile feedback device into a prosthetic arm. Now in our department people have made uh, one of the researchers, one of the uh, 
students have made a prosthetic arm for uh, people uh, and beauties and uh, unfortunately the video is not playing right and the thing is now in the case of prosthetic arms if you want to hold an object The arm is uh, here. What what happens is that when you want to uh, hold an object, if you are not looking now, if in the case of ourselves, we don't normally need to see what we are holding. Just go. If we know the object place is here, we just move the arm, and we just shut, touch. We we just hold it without looking at it because we have tactile feedback coming we know that okay we have touched the object so we can grasp it and then lift it but the, in the case of amputees we don't have that luxury people don't know whether the the, the 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 arm went to the object and grasped it or not you need to have some feedback given to it and we have used a tactile array kind of a, a tactile array to give that feedback and that's also been used uh, that that's being connected to the the, the arm, forearm here, and uh, whenever the the arm touches the object, there will be some sensation here. So he knows that okay, I I have touched the object. Now we can improve this to find out okay, if to uh, to discriminate textures, touch uh, a fabric and say okay, this is polymer, uh, poly. Uh, nylon this is polyester like that or this is wool like that to give the same sensation as we are feeling to the amputee as well we are trying to do that and uh, yeah, this video is not playing okay so uh, these are some of the uh, applications that have been done in the department Okay, now to the final part. What we can do in Sri Lanka with this robotics technology? The first thing that we come that comes to my mind is we could develop software platforms for robotic applications. This is the very easiest and most uh, profitable one right now. Example for uh, human body uh, simulations now in the case of uh, uh, biomedical applications you need to model the human body and if we can uh, get an MRI scan and uh, straight away uh, develop the 3D model and get, do some finite element analysis or find out some some uh, uh, faults or something like that and uh, we could use that and we could make a uh, software and sell it that's one thing. The other thing is uh, wearable sensor networks. Now, as I showed you in the earlier picture, there was the sensor that when you stretch it, you could get the stretch uh, information onto your tab. Like that, we could have developed different types of sol uh, software apps for uh, health monitoring, uh, then uh, software uh, for simulating uh, robotic applications of robotic applications and uh, even uh, controlling these platforms some tool kits to control these platforms this is one of the very easiest methods of i'm not saying the the, the, the work is easy but it is in our alley of specialty because we are very good with programming and it does not require much uh, uh, hardware requirement and the other thing is we could use our rubber resources we could add, add value to our rubber 
Now we could uh, produce components, soft actuators, soft sensors using a latex rubber for this soft robotic applications. Only need to find out which is required because still the materials for these uh, soft robotics is is limited and there are so many shortcomings with these materials uh, and the fabrication methods as i told you 3d printing is there but it's expensive coagulant method uh, coagulant dipping is very cheap and uh, but the the limit there are some limitations we need to come up, come up with solutions to uh, help manufacturing these kinds of actuators and sensors then we would have some uh, some say in the future and uh, of course our garment factories uh, garment sector is very strong there is research going on in, in wearable tech and we could uh, find out different ways of uh, you know uh, health monitoring activity measurements etc etc sports engineering sports engineering is another well, uh, well lucrative uh, field uh, and uh, hazardous environment hazardous uh, uh, hazardous uh, environment monitoring like that you could uh, have many applications in this area of course industrial automation there's a lot of research going on with grippers we could go into that also or we can go into some other method the actuator itself the linkages for the the robot manipulators some something like that we could go into that and more ambitious project could be biomedical assistive devices like uh, exosuits fully fully functional exosuits uh, like that for elderly population as well as for uh, workers like now in the case of uh, one very recent uh, request was now in the case of uh, from a doc this was from, this came from a doctor now in in peta there are natans they are lifting packs of 50 kilograms or above every day 200 300 uh, sacks every day and uh, there are about 200 300 people working in the in peta and all of these people suffer from back injuries back pains so how can we uh, help them we could uh, not have a robot itself but some kind of a passive element to help them straighten up their back or help them to lift that weight not a very expensive solution a very simple solution maybe we could go into that these are some of the aspects that can be uh, we can uh, you know uh, check and this lifting weights is not only for Nathamis but also there are other people in the world that lift weights for their living and we could help them this is one thing and of course the entertainment sector very lucrative if you go into that sector so uh, i would conclude my lecture not lecture sorry speech today and uh, my lab students helped me to prepare this lecture as also my wife so uh, thank you so much for the section mechanical engineering section by yourself for giving me this opportunity to do uh, brief you a little bit about the soft robotics and if you have any questions do we have time to yes, sure. okay so if you have any questions you can ask me or clarifications needed so nobody understood anything or everything was understood well and no pressure, no questions at all <laughs> so, yeah sorry yes uh, which one this one yeah.
Det ser jag inte. Ah, the, the skin, yes. I think... Uh, this one, right? Here there is no sensor. This is just silicon rubber. And there is a, uh, a fluidic uh, line that passes through that. There's a two layers. One there is fluidic line going through. And whenever there is a, when you push, the fluidic line uh, deforms a little bit. So the resistance changes. That is understood by this uh, sensor. There's no physical sensor like that, but it's just um, a liquid that conducting that's going in a channel, and when the channel squeezes, the liquid, uh, the the the, the tube-like thing closes. So the uh, the channel, the resistance uh, between that two parts is different. So that's been uh, analyzed by the software. So, I mean, the sensor itself is just a, uh, just a channel with a liquid, a conductive liquid. Similarly with the, uh, I don't know whether you understood it or not, two layers, okay, before you want the two layers, there is a channel, a, a, a gutter-like thing, and you fill it with the liquid, liquid and you bond it together. Right? And whenever you push that sensor, that gutter-like thing uh, closes. So there will be two, play, uh, two points, uh, two different sections of that gutter. They are, they, their connection breaks and that, has in, that will increase the resistance and that resistance is being uh, measured by an electronic circuit. So that's the only thing that uh, has uh, that's used here. Did you uh, did I make it clear? Yeah, okay. Right. So I didn't hear. Catch. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, what was the application again? Microcontroller. To uh, to control the robot, you can use a microcontroller. Is that the question you're asking? Yeah. Yes, we can. We can. We just need only few logic circuits to operate the soft robot. You don't need to have a microcontroller. You can just uh, the robots actuators are. If it's a pneumatic system, you only have pneumatic valves. And uh, the pneumatic valves you can operate on or off using some gates. But if you want very high level uh, capacity, like uh, thinking or vision based controlling, you need a microcontroller. Otherwise, just for walking or something like that, very simple task, you don't need a microcontroller, just a logic circuit is enough. Right now, the main power that we are using is pneumatic supply. But the pneumatic supply again, you need to have a compressor, and that compressor is working on energy, uh, electricity. But uh, for the next, uh, the evaluation, if you if you look at the future, I would say that you would have. Like, uh, internal energy sources, kind of like you can have a uh, solar panel, a uh, soft, flexible solar cells connected to the body itself so that it can uh, absorb some solar energy. It can generate its own energy, but of course, you will need to put some energy to get a workout. But that the method that you are getting that energy, it can be a battery, it can be solar energy, it can be like. Uh, the energy from the the power grid, or it can be chemical energy. There are some sort of some robots that use two chemicals to come up with the two chemicals so that it reacts and uh, releases some gases and do some work. That's also possible. This is just a technology. 
we could adapt it to any any uh, energy source we want Uh, well, the, in nowadays there are is some toolkits. There are so many YouTube videos that you can use to at least make a gripper, soft gripper. There are so many videos, and you just only need to uh, buy the materials and then use it. That is also there, and also there are toolkits. If you go to eBay, there are, there are a few toolkits available to make the soft robots as well as or some parts are already made, and you can use it. That's uh, there. There is run. No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor Dam Chatrang, for that wonderful, informative, and yet very interesting uh, presentation uh, which contained a lot of valuable information uh, lined up in a very attractive manner uh, so uh, robotics usually sounds as a as a complex and sophisticated subject but you presented it in a, in a way uh, which uh, it's very uh, easy to understand and very interesting. Uh, so, in order to present the token of appreciation for today's presenter, Dr. Damit, I would like to invite Chartered Engineer Mr. Nihal Adipattu to the stage uh, in order to present the token of appreci appreciation. Thank you very much, dear sirs. Uh, so, before uh, winding up the session, uh, I would like to again express our deep sense of gratitude to today's presenter, Dr. Tamit Chatranga, specialist in soft robotics, for volunteering his valuable share, uh, 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 volunteering to share his knowledge and valuable time despite his busy schedules. A uh, special thank goes to uh, engineer Arjuna Manamperi, former chairman of the Mechanical Engineering Sectional Committee, who is always in there for increase the momentum uh, for his leadership and proper guidance in organizing these type of events. I would also like to thank all the staff of IESL, especially Ms. Ramani, Ms. Sanduni, Mr. Kalana, Mr. Chamara from IT department and Mr. Tudor, manager operations for supports us in organizing this event. Uh, actually, I would like to mention that this event also is live screened through uh, IESL website. You can log on and uh, for that website to revisit this lecture. Further, my mechanical engineering sectional committee colleagues who have strived hard 
to successfully organize this public lecture a special thank to all of them last but not least i would like to show my gratitude to you the audience of this public lecture without your pop participation this lecture would not have been a success be with us for the next set of public lecture lineup that will be organized by mechanical engineering section will come to soon and i would like to uh, to the announcement that the next public lecture would be on 26th of march 2018 here on legacy of a transport project how engineers could contribute to develop a nation and that will be conducted by engineer suddha amrutung engineer suddha amrutung is a member of australian senior public service with valuable experience in major construction infrastructure development and business operations management and engineer suddhat amrut suddhat amrutung i would share his insights on how a combination of engineering design and project management complexities and challenges health innovations the emphasis during the presentation will be given to how the project acted as a catalyst to economic growth of the region and the process of uh, the project team used to management of stake stakeholders including politicians so uh, please uh, mark the date and be here on that lecture as well thank you everyone again good night and have a safe journey home